Hi everyone, welcome back to Duck the Aquatics. In this episode today, I'm gonna to be doing how to do a planted pot with dirt in your aquarium, uh, because I know some people wanna do dirted aquariums with plants, but they wanna do it in pots so they can move it around so it doesn't make a mess throughout their tanks, or if they're doing a breeding setup and they wanna have uh, a dirted pot so that they can have a bare bottom tank for breeding. So this should be a very easy video for you guys to follow. I'm gonna do more of a mini scape because I want something that will look really nice. Uh, so let's jump into it. So I've got the tank that I'm using today. I've just put uh, black contact paper on the back of the tank because it was easier than painting it. So when I fill up the tank, we'll see how that ends up looking. I've got a shallow pot here. This is actually a bonsai pot. It's, I'll get the tape measure and I'll tell you exactly how big it is. about just under a foot long I'd say. Yeah, it's just on a foot. So it's a foot in length and then it is about three quarters of a foot wide as well. So it's an oval shaped pot. The other one that I was considering using is a glazed uh, terracotta bonsai pot but I'm just going for a more subdued look for this one because I want, want the plants to be the feature. So all I've done for this, uh, you don't have to do this depending on what type of pot you're using, but I know the feet on this will be a little bit harsh on the um, glass. So I've just put sand substrate down here. It's only about five mil thick. Um, and that's just to cushion the bottom of the feet of the pot and also because I want it to be uh, a really nice display. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some paper towel and I'm going to line the bottom of the pot with some paper towel just because bonsai pots traditionally have holes in the bottom that are like this, that are quite large and this is so that they can be wired up and uh, all sorts of stuff for the bonsai so that's not going to work really well for an aquarium because everything's just going to fall out the bottom of it so I've got three lengths of um, paper towel and I'm just going to fold over so it doesn't stick up over the edges and that's literally all the prep you need to do for the bottom of the pot um, before you start filling it with substrate. I'm going to put a layer of sand at the bottom just so uh, eventually when the paper towel does wear out there's something that's filtering through the dirt so I'm only going to put about, because this is only up to there, so two finger knuckles deep for the pot, I'm only going to do a half a finger knuckle of uh, sand in the bottom there just to keep the, the soil from uh, washing out the bottom once the uh, paper towel disintegrates in a, a year or so. So I've just got some washed children's play sand. I rewashed it again just to make sure there wasn't anything else in the sand. And I'm just gonna put that over the bottom. It's a really fine sand, so it, if you had the sand by itself to fill the pot entirely, you're probably not gonna get the best results for your plants, even with root tabs, because with really fine sand, a lot of the time you'll find that plants will have a difficult time sending their roots through the substrate. So that's why I usually in a planted tank, if I'm using sand, I'll use more of a coarse river sand than a really fine play sand. So as I'm spreading it out, I'm just using the bottom of the container just to evenly disperse it and get it nice and flat. Because just like Anakin Skywalker, I hate the feeling of sand. But it does look great in the aquarium. So the light that I'm using for this display tank is just a little Chihiro's light. So that's uh, what this one here is. Just a, it's not a, a state of the art one that you can control with your phone or anything. It's just kind of the cheaper one that I could get. And I find that the Chihiro lights work really well for growing plants. So trying to make this look like a nice display, I thought it was probably the better uh, budget option
So not all the paper towel is covered. So you can see just in the corners here, there's like a little bit still there, but the main thing to cover was the holes which in the center, which is done. So the next thing to do is actually just get the potting mix and I'm going to put, because there's still a, a finger and a half, a knuckle and a half of room there. I'm probably going to do another half a finger knuckle depth of uh, soil and I'll put some root tabs into this pot as well and then I'm going to put in the hardscape and cap it off and then I'll do the planting at the end. So for the dirt that I'm using in this aquarium it's actually the cheapest potting mix money could buy and the reason why I always use the cheapest potting mix is because I know that it's going to be mainly really finely minced up. Uh, bark and stuff like that to make the potting mix so they're not going to add any extra chemicals and stuff like that into there so I don't have to really worry about it hurting the fish. Uh, you can use other stuff if you do your research I just always choose the cheapest one because even with big chunks of bark like this uh, eventually it will start to break down in the aquarium just become nutrients for the plants anyway so I find it doesn't really make that much difference. You can get a strainer or a sieve and, and kind of sieve out those uh, bigger particles, but I just leave them in. It's uh, really one of those dealer's choice scenarios. So uh, if you think you're gonna have issues with bark kind of sticking out or floating out of the pot, then by all means, just give it a quick sort out through a, um, a broad sieve and that'll get all those particles out. And when I do this, I'm not going to the very edges of the pot with the soil because I'm going to put more sand to cap it off before then. And I don't want the uh, soil kind of bubbling out or a fish are getting into the center, into the edges and kind of digging it out. So I haven't decided exactly which fish are going to go in here. And as you can see, the uh, soil is in there and it's not very far off the edges maybe a half an inch or two centimeters or one centimeter in some spots and that's all you need because a little bit of dirt goes a long way for plants next thing i'm going to do is get a fertilizer tablet and break that apart to go into there i use uh, osmocote water garden i've been using them for about 10 years and they've been really good uh, and of course, the reason why they're really good is if you look at the NPK on there, so it's 14, three and nine. So it's everything that your plants will need to get going, uh, especially because a lot of your plants, if you, when you're first setting up your tank, if they're really green, bushy plants, they're gonna go through the nitrogen really quickly. So that's why you want the N value to be uh, reasonably high. And especially if you're also using them for things like your tiger lotuses and water lilies, they're also uh, nutrient hogs when it comes to nitrogen because they need it to throw out their leaves because their leaves are usually relatively short lived. So the fertilizer tablets come like this. As you can see, each individual grain is just loosely bonded together and I'm just gonna break them apart a little bit and spread them through the soil. One of these tabs is meant to do 20 litres of water, um, but I assume that's thinking more so for a fish pond, so I would underdose for your fish tank, uh, especially if you're kind of new to doing this stuff, just because a little bit goes a long way and sometimes less is more, so don't overdo it with the fertilizers. Especially if you're going to be using slower growing plants for this, so your Anubius, your Bulbitis, uh, Ibusa philandras and java ferns are all relatively slow growing plants so having too much nutrients in there isn't going to make them grow faster it's just going to cause a huge algae bloom and that's all you need for the fertilizer spread out through there this is a slow release fertilizer so i know i don't need to change any of it for at least six months so it's time to cap this off now So again, I'm just using the same wash children's play sand. The 
depending on how you want to scape out your pot, like if you're using a bonsai pot, which is usually pretty broad, so you can do a mini scape like what I'm doing, um, you can kind of mound the sand in the center and create kind of like a, a hill to plant out. And that's a, a good way to get some uh, different levels with your plants, depending on which plants you're using. Cause you can use a single species of plant like dwarf hair grass and create the look of like a grassy knoll or you can do what I'm going to do and I'm going to have a few different species of plants in there and have like a mini, mini scape garden. You can stick driftwood in. If you've got a bigger piece of driftwood that kind of needs to be anchored, I would put that in before adding the dirt so that when you add your dirt and your capping substrate, that it's just going to anchor it in place a lot better. Otherwise, if you're using a bonsai pot and you're going to add in a big piece of driftwood or even a, a uh, bonsai driftwood into there, you can get the bonsai wire, which is made out of aluminium and actually wire it into place as well. So that's another way to just to hold it because the aluminium shouldn't rust. And then if you just keep an eye on it when you're doing your maintenance and if it looks like the wire is getting worn out, just take it out and replace it. Uh, don't use galvanized wire, even though that's what they use when they do a lot of the bunch plants. It's usually not good long term to have in your fish tank. So with the capping substrate, I haven't done it perfectly to fill out all of the pot. So there is still a little bit of the edges that are sunken down, it's a bit hard to see on the camera, but it does actually kind of bevel and scoop out all around here with a little bit of a mound here. And that's because I've still got to add the hardscape in here. And then when I start doing the plants in there, I can add more of this sand to cap it off. So it doesn't actually have to be fully uh, capped off to the brim before you do the planting. You can add more in before, uh, at the end after you finish doing your plantings. And then even if you wanted to, uh, use half as much sand as what I've done and then you can cap off with a nice uh, pebble uh, substrate if you want to do that instead as well. The sand is just really good for filtering out any of the like the tannins and stuff like that that could be coming through from the, uh, the potting mix. So I'm going to use lava rock for the hardscape. Uh, unfortunately the rock I really like is quite big for this Pot. So when I put it in there, you can see I've already lost a lot of space off there, but I think it looks really nice. So I may find a way to make it work. So as you can see from the top down, there's still a, a decent amount of space left in the pot, but that did take up quite a big area. I kind of like that light layout because with the large one in the center going there, then a small one there that comes out, and a small one there that comes out. It's actually the Chinese uh, character for mountain, which is San, and I kind of like the look of that, but I think I'm gonna be losing too much planting space, so I might just have a little play around with how to set things out. Actually, I think that, that might work. I like that. So when you're doing your hardscaping, this is something that's true for landscaping, which is actually my background is a horticulturalist and landscaper. Um, when you're doing your hardscaping sort of stuff like that, or if you do bonsai, you'll also know this as a, not a rule of thumb, it's just something that you can use as a guide. When you do your hardscape like this, have things in odd numbers if it's under the number 10 and it will be visually more striking than having uh, even numbers. But having said that, because this is playing with the scale, even if you only had two rocks like that, it still looks nice. I just like something, the third one in here to break up the scape. Um, and then also if you've got different varieties of rocks you want to use in your tank uh, when you're scaping as well, if you have them in groups 
of three uh, of the same rock together, they will usually look a lot better than if you have them kind of scattered out into different places. So I actually really like that. The next step for this now is actually to give it a spray down with water and try and get that uh, soil and everything quite damp just for when we're planting. So I have my trusty spray pack. Just gonna give it all a pretty good spray down. And this will also help settle the rocks into position with the sand as well. And as you can see when the pot, well you probably can't see from that angle, as you can probably see now, when the pot gets wet, it actually has a, a nice uh, deep brown colour and any of those imperfections on the pot uh, in terms of like the, the markings or the dust markings will come off because uh, it's quite a porous pot so they will show up when it's dry but when it's wet you'll get the really nice rich colours coming through. And as you can see, as this is getting sprayed down, the sand is compacting with the soil and more of the edge is being exposed. So that's another reason why it's good to give this a spray down before you plant as well. So that's it after being sprayed down. As you can see, the rock is kind of over the edge of the pot, but that doesn't actually matter that much. It's time to now pick out some plants. And I think I want a mix of colors to go in there. So I've got things like Monte Carlo at the front here, uh, Ligugia glandulosa, which are all quite nice. Uh, Alternate Imperial Nikki Red Mini, and uh, at the back there, the green ones are Hygrophila Compactor. But I think I want to get some different ones. I may even go with some of this uh, Glosso Stigma for the front carpet. Got some stuff like Anubius Pinto here that I could use as well. Or a Tala. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Rotala Orange for the back as the stem plant. Might attach some Anubius Pinto to the lava rock or just in front of the lava rock at the front as a nice little feature white plant. And even some crypts to go in there as well. All right, I think that's gonna be the go. Okay, so what I ended up choosing for the plants, I got one really tiny, half-grown 
uh, HC Cuba, which I'm going to plant in the center. We've got one Crypt Lutea. So that's uh, just one cryptocorn plant in there, and some of the roots growing out the bottom. You plant that towards the middle back there. So we've got one upon Jigeton, which is this one. So this is going to be the tall plant. So I'm going to put that one towards the back there. Some cuttings of the Rotala orange. So only a little bit of them have roots up there, and I'm going to put that probably at the front here. And I'm just going to keep that one trimmed short. So if you know Rotala, Rotala will grow quite tall, but if you keep it cut down low, similar to a pearl weed, it will be a nice little mid-ground plant. It's all about doing the maintenance. And then for here, I've got some Japan Dwarf Blixer which I'm going to plant on this side over here to contrast with the rock. And I've got one little Anubius Pinto, which has got leaves like that. And under the light, with a better light with uh, more nutrients, it should get more white marbling through the leaves. And I may stick that uh, just off the side on the rock here. Yeah, I think that'll look nice. And I'm keeping the roots long on the uh, Anubius. So what I'm gonna do, instead of gluing it to the rock, I'm just gonna find somewhere where it kind of sits naturally, but the roots hit the soil. I'm gonna plant the roots underneath the substrate so they can get access to the nutrients and then allow it to just attach itself to the rock over a period of time. So very high tech for the planting. I've just got my trusty scissors. Find the spot where I want the plants to go. Actually, I might swap this one. So the HC cube is going to go towards the front there. Retail is going to go in the middle here. Just make a little circle into the sand like that. So it's perfect little divot. Make sure when you do this, especially if you've got fresh cut stems, so try and get them all to line up in a group so you can put them into the hole and they all stay in together. So like that. They all fell in perfectly like that and then you're just gonna press with your finger around the edges of it to concave everything around there. You don't wanna crush the stems, but you want them to be firmly planted just like that. So when you fill up the tank, they shouldn't come floating out. Same thing for the HC Cuba. Pull it out of its pot. As you can see it's got the tiniest root system ever, but again, it's got that nice little V shape down to there, so it'll fit into a planted hole quite easily. Make another divot, same thing. Plant it in and then just pinch around there, or if it's really soft, just push with your finger to kind of clamp it in. And you, the main thing you're doing when you're planting anything is you want them to be anchored in there and then they will establish their own root system. So even though the HC cube is a little bit exposed out there, it will anchor itself in with its own roots. So you don't have to be too pedantic about making sure every single root is covered by substrate because the plants will do it themselves as well. So I might actually hide the Eponji Geaton kind of behind the rock because it's going to tower out over it. Make my nice little hole there. So I know stuff like the Crypticorn and the uh, Eponji Geaton are going to get extensive root systems. So even though I've got the rock covering half of this pot, the root systems from the Crips and the Pongegeton are going to travel from this end all the way underneath the rock. So it's not really a loss or waste of space if you have done what I've done and you've added a really big scape rock into there. The 
Now, if you, when you buy plants and they've got this rock wool fiber in here, you don't have to be too pedantic about getting that all off the base there. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's bad for the fish, blah, blah, blah. I do this for a living and I've got rock wool fiber in every single one of my tanks and the fish don't suffer from it. So don't get yourself worked up about having to get every single piece off the root system of your plants. There, dwarf blixer. So this one is attached like a V here, and then these two are kind of loose. So I'm going to do them as two smaller clumps planted a little bit apart, just so that they fill in the spaces a bit better. I didn't want to get duckweed into this tank but I'm not too worried about it at this point because everything that I've got is quite low growing. When I fill the tank up to the top, I will be able to skim the surface and get the duckweed off. So if that's one thing you're doing with a tank that you're starting fresh and you're worried about duckweed and stuff like that getting in there, it's not too late. As long as immediately after filling the tank up, you get on top of getting rid of all the duckweed. It may take a few days of having to skim the surface, but eventually you will get it all if you do do it at the early stages. Because if you wait a week or so, or even a few days for the duckweed and it starts multiplying, it's pretty much game over with trying to get on top of it. There's that one. If it would kind of sit there like that would be pretty good. So for this one, instead of doing a hole, I'm just gonna do a small trench like that. So I just drag the scissors across and I've literally made a trench like that bury the root system partially in there so if I can get it to stay like that some of the roots are into that trench you're gonna have to go a bit lower and I've ramped up the soil or uh, sand a little bit to it If you have a drill bit and a good drill, you can drill out part of the rock and do it like that. Because the way I'm doing this like that is the very lazy way of doing it. And there's every chance that that's going to come off the edge there, but I'm willing to be patient and play the waiting game with this. Let's see. Actually, this might work as well. So I've just noticed this rock here has a little bit of a divot that runs along there. I can put this like that in there and then put a little bit of sand in there as well as partial bit of a root tab and then the roots are still going to grow down the rock like that and they should find their way to the soil. You'll find with a lot of rhizome plants like Anubius and Volbitis that when you attach them to rocks like that and they send their roots down off the rock into the substrate, they end up growing twice as fast as if they were just attached to the rock with nothing else. So I put, I put a quite a decent amount of uh, fertilizer on the roots just then. And the main reason why I did that is because when you got specialized Anubius and stuff like that, uh, they do need more nutrients to get that really nice white pigment into them. So you'll find quite often that you'll buy stuff that's like Anubius white or Anubius pinto and then all of a sudden it just looks like Anubius nana after a few few months. And that's not because that you got sold a jibbed like plant or a plant grown under stress so that it ends up with deformed leaves, which was a trend not that long ago um, but what happens is without enough nutrients particularly if you've got a tank that doesn't have co2 you'll find a lot of the time the leaves will just go green because the plant needs the green chlorophyll filled leaves um, to photosynthesize and create energy so that's usually just what it is is it will get rid of the pigment in order to have more nutrients going to it because only the green parts of plants actually photosynthesize so like I've done before, except this time I've got the garden hose, I'm just going to fill up using this little bonsai pot here. Just to do a few 
diffuse the water coming in. I've got it, the hose on a real low trickle just so it doesn't flood out too badly. And this is what the scape looks like from above. As you can still see, there's quite a few empty spots in there. And um, I'd prefer to leave some open spaces for this scape just because it gives me more opportunity to plant out more later as it kind of grows in and I see how it looks. But you can put way more plants than that in there now. I didn't put any red plants in there for the time being, uh, the, mainly because the colour of the pot and the rocks that are in there are the red focal points. Um, but I may add some red plants in there later. If I was using something like the Japanese Dragonstone, which is a real light or dark grey mixture, then adding red plants into there would be a really nice contrast. But because I've got the hardscape pot and rocks already as a red colour, the green from the leaves of these plants is going to contrast it a lot nicer. So I think if I do that, and then if I can find some fish that are really nice silver or blue, that will finish this scape off as a really nice tank. So just wait for this to fill up still a long way from filling up but as you can see the water level is just here and the pot level is there if you are someone who's keeping something say like frogs or salamanders or anything that likes to kind of go out into you know a damp environment or a bog environment this is actually another good way to do it so you can do a setup like that obviously a bit deeper so you'd elevate the pot so that they've got somewhere where they can go in the water but then somewhere that they can bask in there and you just buy something uh, of eBay like a fogger uh, just to keep humidity in there and you'd be able to have a little mini planted garden just like that in your vivarium, paludarium or your uh, frog enclosure so that's just another thing to keep in mind because a lot of these aquarium plants do grow in bog environments quite well and especially if you've got something like a fogger or a mister that's timed onto there with a enclosed lid that kind of keeps moisture there they'll do really well for you so as this is still slowly filling up I'm going to take the opportunity to start scooping out some of this duckweed I use a brine shrimp net that's really fine muslin material because that makes sure you don't miss any part of the duckweed as you scoop it out because anyone who's had duckweed in their aquariums know how prolific it is and how hard it is to actually get rid of. So duckweed isn't bad by any means, it's just when you're doing stuff with other plants in your aquarium, if the duckweed is allowed to take over, a lot of the time it will be a nutrient hog as well as uh, being a light hog and then a lot of your plants won't grow as well. So if you're having difficulty growing plants and you've got a lot of duckweed or a zola or Amazon frog pit, anything like that growing on the surface, usually the plants underneath that are doing well are being starved of light and or nutrition. So that's where root tabs can be a superior fertilizer for some plants even though it's uh, commonly accepted that stuff like stem plants will take nutrients out of the water, so liquid fertilizers are fine to use for them. Uh, sometimes it's still better to have a root tab fertilizer for your plants that are actually planted into the substrate. So as I'm looking at this scape, I feel like it's missing something, so I've just gotten three stems of lobelia, which is a plant I've never actually grown in the aquarium before, so we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to put them kind of here and plant them relatively deep into there because I want them to kind of stay more as a mid-ground plant. So one of them's got some semblance of a root system on there. And that'll be pushed down there. Kind of fills in the area a bit more and uh, this spot here is looking a little bit like the back of my head and a bit thin so I might put some more uh, Japan Dwarf Blixer in there and then after that it's not going to look that impressive but like I tell my partner don't worry it'll grow and there we have it so that's all scaped out 
if I was going to do more of a display tank, this I'm happy to let it grow in because I know uh, plants take time to establish and they'll bush up. But if you wanted to do one that's planted out three times as thick as this with more varieties of plants, uh, you can do that quite easily because every spare bit of blank space that you can see here, there's no reason why you can't plant it out with more plants. Um, just keep in mind when you do do stuff like that, it's better to have the same type of plants kind of grouped in together or go by colour. So if you've got a bunch of red plants, a bunch of red plants planted close together in one section, then a bunch of green in another section, will visually look better than if you have them scattered or interplanted amongst each other. 99% of the time because that's just the way um, design as well as the way our eyes get caught um, by colour the, the way we find it most pleasing that usually works out to be like that so when you see really nicely uh, landscape gardens they usually have whole sections of a single colour kind of grouped together because visually it's really pleasing to the eye so I'm quite happy with the way this turned out I'm probably going to upload this video before waiting for it to grow in because uh, I haven't uploaded anything for quite a while. So this I'll keep you guys updated on. There's no CO2 in here. This is technically a low-tech tank. There's not even a filter in here. Um, once this stuff grows in after about a week or two, I'll do an update video and I will add some fish into here. Uh, until that time, I'm just kind of let it kind of establish because the lava rocks, as you can see, they're bubbling quite a bit because they're really dry. So they need to get a bit waterlogged as well because I don't want to be messing around at the inside of this tank and then uh, knock the rocks out because they are only being held by goodwill at this point. They haven't waterlogged yet. If you'd like me to do another video like this uh, for how to do one for a goldfish tank, because goldfish are notorious for eating plants or even a cichlid tank or even a low tech low light uh, setup just leave a comment down below and i'll make those videos there's no point in me making them uh, if people aren't going to really want to see them um, and if you've enjoyed this one please like and subscribe because it does help me my channel isn't monetized yet so i'm sorry that my videos have a whole bunch of ads in there that's not my doing <laughs>